Hello everyone, Post here. After a good night's sleep and waking up to the bird app exploding with new Grand Blue drama, I guess it's time to go over what caused it all. So let's start with a quick recap of the summer GBFest livestream and then delve into the issues that it's bringing. As always, side games first, with a Versusia trailer. Our 9 feet tall mom seems pretty angry as she takes this stage, making sure Gran doesn't leave the dishes in the sink again. She'll become playable on the 20th of August with version 1.5. Following that, a short trailer for Vicky, straight off of her EVO appearance, her release date, somewhere in October. Lastly, Sandalphone will open the new season pass, but his release date is yet to be determined. Meanwhile, the fifth battle pass will see the release of a Belial skin that I'm pretty sure I will have to censor if I want to keep this video up, as well as a new Jack Rabbit Lobby avatar and a couple of new minigames, Slam Blaster and Robomi Reflex Tester. After a little bit of merch, we move on to Relink. Relink? Complete radio silence on that front. Hopefully we'll see two more characters and a bit more content added towards the end of the year. As for Grand Blue itself, to no one's surprise, Summer Ragazzo opens the dances for the new gacha releases, followed by Summer Hecate with a redesigned swimsuit. Poor girl joins Olivia and Fedil in being unable to eat an ice cream without spilling it. We're going to have to hold an intervention for these people, I swear. Then, the first point of controversy, Yukata's song. Me personally, I'm very happy to see more eternal content that isn't just copy-pasted uncapped fate episodes, but apparently people have already decided that the limited Eternals are going to be way too powerful and completely ruin and power creep the existence of the farmable ones. Not a single skill shown, not a single number, just lots of tears. Since they're starting with Song, I'm pretty sure she will be either Fire or Earth to be paired with Yukata or Summer Silva, but we'll see that in a couple more days. Then the new Summer Summon, Swimsuit Beelzebub. If you do see a swimsuit, let me know, cause all I see is bare ass. To bleach our eyes a little bit, here comes the new EX poses, this year for Fina, Albert and, what do you know, Silva herself. They were followed by a new paid skin for Zeta, and no pun intended when I say this rocks pretty hard. But as much as I like the blondie, I'm eagerly waiting for the side B of this image. Then another GBFS skin for Gran and Jita, looking pretty neat as well. Their availability dates will be August for Zeta and September for Gran and Jita. Then they will go away for a year before becoming permanent in 2025, just like the skins for Six and Makura are about to be. After the gacha and skins, it's time for a new scamcha, this time focused on summer units and keeping up the pick your 10 possible drops mechanic. Following this up, another surprise ticket with the new units going down to Sato. This will be available until August 15th, so if you plan to spark during the summer, be careful. The next action was focused on the events, with the current red barrage about to end and being followed by the new summer event bringing the Bonito Rider skin. August 7th we'll see a rerun for the Ex of Ohumana, this time coming with more levels from 155 to 175, awakening level 15 and added challenge missions for some of them. August 15th we'll also see a Rise of the Beast rerun, this time for the Earth Guardian, of course, and it looks like they're not taking out the older items out of the pool, so it will just keep on getting even more diluted. Hopefully this won't slow down the farm for the Little Tiger too much. Charlotta's McDonald event will be added to the side stories on August 19th, while the Summer Food Fight one will be run on August 22nd. This one was the one with Summer Kolulu and Summer Amira. The September monthly event will remain a mystery until announced, but halfway through that month we'll see a Strength to Wield rerun, possibly leading into another Four Nights event in October. Before we get that to everyone's favorite event. The United Fight will begin on September 7th and have Water Bosses, which means Celestial Spear and Dagger will finally make their appearance. This one is going to hurt, and it's going to hurt a lot. Since we got the Magna Tree Grids and the player power has continued creeping, the new Guild War will see the introduction of a level 250 Nightmare Boss. Preliminaries will still only have the EX Plus at 9 and 90s, Day 1 will have the Nightmare 90s and 100s available. Day 2 will have the Nightmare 150s spawn after defeating 100 level 100s. 
the tree will have the Nightmare 200 spawn after defeating 100 level 150s and the Nightmare 250 spawn after defeating 100 level 200s. Day 4 will of course just be level 250s. This is not all though, as the EX Plus and Nightmare 90 will also see an increase in HP, with the EX Plus going up to 35 million, 11 more than the last guild war, Liepossina, and the Nightmare 90 going up to 50 million. On the bright side, they're also increasing the meat drop by the rates as well as the chances to drop celestial weapons, but a 35 million EX Plus might be a bit of a struggle. After a bit of a buff to the daily logins, another one comes to the leader skills, with a 10% damage cap on top of a 30% charge bar as well as a 25% boost to attack and 30% boost to HP from the officer buffs. They look okay, but at the same time I'm not holding my breath for the 600 plus million HP bosses. Earth be my worst element by far is also going to suck all the leftover fun out of it. But Back in lighter news, they finally woken up the intern who was supposed to work on the housing and will get a new summer set on July 29th. August 5th will see a bit of an update to the shop with new tabs for bullets, manatura, shields and whatnot, so you won't have to use the class menus to craft those items. And keeping up with this quality of lifestyle, they will also add a job list that will let you check skills and EMPs without having to actually change your class to do so. Small quality of life update, but still very appreciated. And even more appreciated was the new full limit break for Alexiel finally closing the Disciple Circle. No release date yet, but she should be coming up before the Guild War. Next up, more pro skips, this time for the Four Angel Trials, coming on August 27th and costing 240 APs. We're going to need a pro skip for all the pro skips soon. Following that, more overskill, this time for HP in case you manage to break the 400% cap, and more interestingly, extra drop if you keep casting Treasure Hunt when it goes above level 9. Then, finally, a new rebalance. The first half will come out in August, and we see a Shiva in here that might be brought up to the Europa and Alexiel power level. Maybe. Hopefully. A Silva, who has been receiving quite a bit of attention this summer, Yorito might be interesting as well, and then there's Yukata Rosamiya. Always been a fan of the talisman mechanic, but stacking them up was a bit of a pain and the damage kind of suffered from it. Fingers crossed, they will all get something good. The second half of the rebalance will come out in October with a much needed Halloween Rosetta, Macula Marius, and hey, Grivnir is in year 2. His 5 star wasn't so great, so hopefully they will bring all the disciples up to a similar level. Not a fan of the other three, but seeing both Feather and Randall makes me suspicious that they're setting up something for the marionette events. A possible 5 star uncap, or a style. You guys remember styles? Yingui is still the only character in the game to have one, and the horoscope weapons awakening could be a great excuse to bring those back. Moving on, the new class, Sumabito. We've gotten a bit of a preview already and sadly the only mechanic that they've announced on stream was a 1v1 mode similar to what Nicholas and Frisia can do. The release date is set for September 3rd, right before the Guild War. On September 19th, a Sutera skin costing 400 login points and looking alright. Then 6 new shields for Paladin and Shieldsworn, Autumn, Horus, Galleon, Fedil, Diaspora and Super Ultimate Bahamut. This will be accompanied by four new Manatura, a super cute Europa, Wilna's Agastya and a Blue Silius dropping from both Fa HL and Fa Zero. The little wings on this thing are taking me the hell out. Later in September, we will also get a new uncap for Grand Order, with the summon going up to level 200 and getting a better call, as well as defensive skills. Guess which summon will get a transcendence next year? A little update to the skin shop, letting you filter things out, and then an automatic elementalization or recycling for S rank weapons. Hopefully, this will make elementalizing all the rusted weapons for the Eternal Transcendence a little bit easier. All those clicks is why four of them are still stuck at level 100 for me. This auto elementalization or recycling will also be added to the Arcade Room in October. And then some actual juicy news. A new raid series on the Raven difficulty, which will also come with the new tier 5 class champion weapons. Starting with Viking, Paladin and King for the first fight, it will eventually expand to the rest. Fingers crossed, we'll see some interesting pieces in there. 
Sometime in December, we will also see a new Eternal related exploration event. We'll have to explore a new area and clear it of monsters to accumulate points that can be used to power up our characters. Upon clearing the fourth episode, we will also have a new EX pose, with the first ones going to Uno and Quotre. And to top it all off, the Eternals will also get something similar to the domains of the Evokers. So maybe, just maybe, there's a little bit of hope that they won't be fully power crept. Next up, a bit of an update for the Cobb. You can now search for rooms the same way you search for raids, with up to 4 preferred fights. Following this, a little bit of an update to the My Home page with more options to customize it. And then, another big controversial point. The next collab will be with the reincarnated as a slime anime and will be held mid-November. The collab will come with a free Rimuru, who will also get a 5 star at the end of it, plus a second not yet announced character. So far so standard, but the collab will also bring two gacha characters for the first time in Grand Blue's 10 year lifespan. Said gacha character will also replace the November Flash units, which has caused even more of an uproar. From Star Games being accused of selling out and this gacha collab units being a sign of the end of service approaching, the Doom posting has been pretty damn loud. Still, I see a way for this whole thing to work and I would like to point you towards the Code Geass and Tails collab. If the slime one is also here to stay and the gacha characters become standard banner units, so permanent content, I don't see anything particularly wrong with it. If the collab gets no rerun and if the new units will be released as collector's FOMO, then yeah, all the complaints will be more than justified. What's even weirder is that this is coming out mid-November. Most people's roles will be gone during summer, some might still have some leftovers from Halloween, but then we've got Christmas and New Year units coming out close by. No one is going to roll mid-November, especially for characters that will apparently be not necessary for the United fight. It looks like they're setting themselves up for yet another disaster, but I want more details on how they're going to handle this before complaining. Moving on, the Magnafest. Starting on August 1st, it will bring a daily free time draw until August 13th, alongside a 5 times experience, half cost host, and the usual goodies. From August 13th to September 1st, a second Magnafest will slow things down a little with free daily draw and a 1.5 times experience. This will also be paired with a Skyscope mission campaign, bringing an SSR ticket and an Eternity Send at 100 points. The Magnafest will be accompanied by a 10 million summer campaign that will add a box with random items in it after every free 10 part draw. And honestly, the word lottery in this description scares me more than both the eternal power creep and the possibly botched collab. It also looks like they never learned from their lot of mistakes since they'll be giving 10 million yen to a single person picked out at random from anyone who rolled the free gacha and I'm pretty sure the price is JP only. The same campaign will also have some sort of point system from clearing raids that will net you some extra unspecified rewards, and it will conclude with a 6 dragon summon. They made the silhouette black for some reason, but Galio's massive head just gives it away. Fingers crossed, the random boxes and the point rewards will be enough to make up for the 120 summer tickets from last year. To help with clears, the usual rotating element double drops. And once the second Magnafest ends, that's when the half anniversary Magnafest begins. More single daily draws, more half cost, more shop boosts, the usual, going on until September 24th. This will also be paired with a Friendpoint campaign as well as a 10 million experience one. And that was basically it. There was another little merch segment, the announcement for a Divine General song, as well as the Europa skin from her CD, while the Winter GB Fest livestream will be held on December 21st and 22nd. Before the curtain call though, a last message from KMA, who will be moving on from the position of Grand Blue Fantasy Director to focus on other projects, while also having a replacement ready to go. Apparently, this unnamed replacement has already been part of the team for about 3 years, and the people on the Bird app began assigning blame to the sky for everything that went wrong since. From some of the designs they claim don't fit the Grand Blue Fantasy style, but rather look like random VTubers, to the power creep, to some weird events. 
And while I haven't been a fan of the NPC murdering spree that they went through these last couple of years, KMR still had to sign off on that. The feeling of the captain abandoning ship before it sinks left a real bad taste in a lot of people's mouths, to the point where the official Twitter fell below 1 million followers almost instantly. Personally, I think it's a bit too early to call it quits, and I'm even more curious to see which direction they will try to take the game next. The detective's event and its horrible writing, the lore-breaking stuff from the sumo event, and the feeling that they don't really know where to take a lot of their storylines though, doesn't instill a lot of hopes. Also, absolutely no mention of the next main story quest chapter, which was even weirder. Sadly, we've got to close this off on a bit of a sour note, but fingers crossed, they won't be able to shoot themselves in the foot four times in a row this summer. <laughs> right then, I guess that's going to be it for me for the moment. As always, thanks a lot for watching, good luck with your free rolls, and see you guys around soon. Ciao!